All right, guys, welcome back to another week of Vision Miner 3D printing news. Today, we're gonna to be talking about some solid state 3D printed batteries. We're gonna be talking into Wasp 3D's new Peak 3D printer. Warren Buffett dropping $6 billion on the 3D printing industry. The world's first 3D printed hockey helmet liner by who else but Carbon, as well as a US firm that's 3D printing kidneys and Team Penske and Stratasys joining forces once again to make 3D printed race car parts. It's gonna be a great one, guys. Guys, get ready and let's dive right in. So starting off today, we're gonna to talk about some solid state batteries which are safer, less expensive, and higher energy density when 3D printed. So Blackstone Resources AG, a Swiss holding company, is focused on the battery metals market and has been investing in next-gen battery technology through its German subsidiary, Blackstone Technology GmbH. The company just announced that it's reached several large milestones in its quest to fabricate lithium ion solid state batteries with their 3D printed technology. Now the goal is to bring down costs from about 80 euros per kilowatt hour, which is about $93. Additionally, by 3D printing these batteries, they can actually eliminate a lot of the metals that don't store energy, like aluminum and copper, by up to 10%. Together with the developments we've made in 3D printing battery technology to date, this development paves the way for mass production of solid state battery cells, says Holger Gritzka, the CEO of Blackstone Technology. In addition to major markets such as the automotive industry, marine applications, and new 5G wireless networks, they would benefit from the advantages that 3D printed solid state cells can offer. I don't know, but I like it, and if you like it too, you might as well go down there and hit that like button and subscribe while you're at it. Moving right along, Wasp 3D is launching their new Delta Wasp 4070 Tech for peak 3D printing. So this sounds pretty cool. We specialize in all that high temp stuff. And this machine claims to be capable of printing peak with a 500 Celsius nozzle and a 300 Celsius bed. Wasp is also planning to offer a peak 3D printing service. Hey, we have that. Uh, and engineers will be able to assist customers in choosing materials and refining process parameters. We do that as well. Sounds like we're a match made in heaven. I want one of these machines. Let's get into it a little bit more. Uh, it's actually a Delta style FDM printer. So it's not the Cartesian robot with the two axes, but it's got three axes uh, up the sides and it moves this whole thing around. One of the big advantages that these, is that these machines can go a lot faster a lot of the time. So getting into it, most of WASP printers have been focused around PLA, ABS, PETG, and then their industrial series have been more into the ASA and PPS, PMMA type polymers. But for this new machine, the specs are as follows. It's got a water-cooled extruder with a full metal hot end, proprietary fire cap system, which heats up the build chamber to around 300 Celsius. That sounds awesome. I wonder how they're gonna do it. If you look at the pictures, it almost looks like they have a shroud over top of the hot end that's keeping that area hot or something. I don't know, but it sounds really cool and I wanna see it myself. And the other cool thing I noticed was that they've got a proprietary inline drying system, which looks like the air and the, the drying actually goes through the filament line, which is very cool. Now, some machines run it through a hot chamber or out the back of the chamber, which is you know, questionable at best, but this sounds pretty cool. Keeping that filament dry while it's sitting in the machine is very, very important. On top of all that, it's got auto bed leveling, Wi-Fi, it's got a vacuum plate as the build plate, um, some kind of built-in G-code analyzer that can check the print jobs for errors and self-diagnose issues. That sounds sweet. Um, I wonder what that's really like. And of course, an onboard camera. So, Wasp, we'd be happy to beta test for you and uh, do a little bit of marketing here and there if it's good. Uh, but this sounds like it'll be a really cool machine. Moving on once again, we've got Warren Buffett dropping $6 billion on 3D printing companies. All right, so you, you guys have heard of this guy, Warren Buffett, Berkshire Hathaway. So on his 90th birthday, he decides to go and drop $6 billion into five of Japan's oldest trading companies. We've got Mitsuiko Ltd, Marubeni Corp, Mitsubishi Corp, Itochu Corp, and Sumitomo Corp. So basically his company Berkshire Hathaway has acquired slightly more than 5% of the shares in these companies, these established Japanese investment firms via its, via its national indemnity company subsidiary, and is willing to boost the stakes up to 9.9%. .9%. These investments are intended to be held long term as Buffett wants to balance their portfolio. They're currently heavily invested into Apple Inc. and uh, 
They want to get into something completely different in order to offset the deep U.S. losses due to the ongoing COVID-19 economic crisis. There's a good chance that he picked these companies because they're actually rooted in big industry like steel and shipping and other major, major industries. Um, but they've also got some cool 3D printing related activities. Let's go into each one real quick. Uh, we've got Mitsui. Now this company uh, runs studies to define clear implementation guidelines for additive manufacturing products. Uh, they're also involved in a global dental material 3D printing project. Now, Sumitomo, we've actually worked with these guys a few times, and they are a giant company all over the world. Uh, and they made a large investment in Centavia, a Florida-based additive manufacturing company serving the, aerospace, serving the aerospace industry, as well as Elementum 3D for the creation of advanced metals, composites, and ceramics. Marobeni is the Japanese distributor of Stratasys 3D printers and Polyjet products, and they also have a recent collaboration with Osaka Titanium Technologies to distribute Totomic Kinetic Fusion Systems and supply the aerospace-grade gas-atomized titanium metal powders globally. Mitsubishi, they've recently developed a hybrid AM machine that combines metal sintering and milling. This new technology is called dot forming and is inspired by the technology of metal deposition under concentrated energy or direct energy deposition. Mitsubishi Chemical has also been delving in and developing a wide range of materials, mostly in FDM, and they've actually been uh, working with Colossus. Now, if you haven't heard of the Colossus, go check out our YouTube channel. We've got a really cool video. It's a, it's, it's a printer in a shipping container. It's a huge printer. It's really cool. You should definitely go check it out. But they're doing a lot of stuff with water soluble and sustainable materials and really cool stuff coming out of there. Lastly, we have Itochu, uh, which is more on the software side, development relating to CAD or computer aided design. So, you know, Buffett's investment is going to really shed some light on these business giants and enlighten the business community. It will also become apparent that this is actually a global investment and not just a concentrated in-country Japanese investment because of all these companies' global reach. Crazy, man. Imagine that. Dropping six billion dollars on a bunch of 3D companies. Uh, smart man, if you ask me. Moving right along, we've got the world's first 3D printed hockey helmet liner approved by the NHL. So, CCM Hockey partnered with Carbon, of course, uh, using the Carbon's DLS technology, they were able to design the Super Tax X helmets. Uh, Carbon's already worked with Adidas to create the sneakers, they've worked with Lamborghini to create car parts, uh, and specialized bikes to create bicycle saddles and other things. They also worked with Riddell to create the NFL helmets we all saw last year. Very, very cool stuff. So Carbon's really enabling a lot of different design choices that were never really before possible. For example, uh, the new helmets are lined with a polyurethane-based lattice instead of standard foam. Previously, you know, they got a bunch of layers of foam in there, uh, but the carbon lattice structure allows for thousands of precisely positioned struts to be engineered specifically in the right areas to counteract physical impact. Uh, the, so the plan is to make these Super Tracks X available for all NHL players in the upcoming 2021 season. But if you're a hockey fan, you've probably already noticed them on some players out there on the field. Specifically, Austin Matthews, John Travers of the Toronto Maple Leafs, and Seth Jones of the Columbus Blue Jackets. And finally, of course, for any NHL fans out there, they are not limiting these just to the professionals. They will be available for the public purchase and other types of teams. Very cool to see that. I love everything Carbon comes out with. It's beautiful, it's cool, it's engineering, it's smart. Really great stuff, guys. Thank you. Moving right along, we've got a U.S. firm is going to start printing kidneys using Israeli technology. United Therapeutics paid $3 million to license coal plants, collagen, and bio-ink technology to print kidneys. Now, this could potentially save millions around the world, as according to the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Organ Procurement and Transplantation Network, nearly 92,000 Americans are waiting for life-saving kidney donations as of September 21st. In Israel, there's something like 5,000 kidney patients on dialysis, 900 of which are eligible for kidney transplants. Dr. Martin, the CEO of United Therapeutics, said, We are excited to expand our collaboration with coal plants. Extraordinary technology to transform the tobacco plant, one that is so associated with devastating diseases, into a collagen-expressing plant that will be essential to the production of an unlimited number of transplantable organs. 
The original collaboration was signed in October of 2018, so there's some developments coming right along. Moving again to the next thing. If you're liking this episode so far, please do go down there and hit that subscribe button or like button or hit the dislike button and leave a comment. Let us know why. Uh, but either way, we love you. So moving right along. Team Penske and Stratasys are renewing their partnership to continue 3D printed race car parts. So this has been a really cool thing. Stratasys and Team Penske, if you look at Team Penske's Instagram, uh, there's all sorts of stuff, Stratasys and 3D printing and, and stuff like that. And they've been really a big voice for 3D printing in the race community over the last few years. So they originally signed an agreement back in 2017 and since then we've seen a lot of stuff come out. Now, Team Penske's actually been around for 50 years and they've had over 500 victories, 37 national championships, and over 70 of those wins and five of the national championships were during the collaboration with Stratasys. And that's a big part of the reason why they just announced they've now signed a new multi-year technical agreement. All of our performance partners represent the highest levels of development in their industry, from auto racing to aerospace to America's Cup yacht racing. And Team Penske is truly elite. You win trophies with an everyday commitment to excellence. And we're here every day for Team Penske to help them rack up another 500 wins. Stratasys America's president, Rich Garrity, in a press release. Utilizing both PolyJet and FDM technologies, they are creating end-use parts, tooling, fixtures, and prototypes for their cars and equipment. Great stuff, keep it up. Love seeing all that high-end stuff coming out. Very, very cool. Now, this week we're introducing a new segment because there's so many things going on in 3D printing, we can't possibly cover them all and dive into the details that we would want to. So, we're giving you the News Blitz. So keep in mind, all the links for these articles are gonna be down below in the description. So if you wanna know more, head down there, check them out. We've got NASA 3D printing rocket engine for its Artemis exploration mission, a Dutch designer using 3D scanning and 3D printing to create custom sized bras for women, Sandvik partnering with GSD Global to 3D print titanium motor nodes for e-bike. While we're on the topic of e-bikes, we've got a list of bicycles made with 3D printing technologies. We've got a partnership between Henkel and Keystone to advance dental additive manufacturing solutions. Researchers develop a 3D printing method for milk. Yeah, you got me on that one too. Researchers create a 3D printed neural implant. Elon Musk, you might want to check this one out. Boeing and NMIS launch a 11.8 million pound R&D program to advance manufacturing in Scotland. Etaplan developing a groundbreaking tool for estimating 3D printing costs. X1 launches their Innovent Pro metal 3D printer and X1D1 automated guided vehicle. Talk about automated production, getting on a new level over at X1. And finally, BCN 3D is launching their line of next gen 3D printers. All right, so last week we actually picked a winner and that person commented, the funniest comment was, if I ask my wife that I want an elevator with a Medusa head inside the house, she'll slap me silly across the head and call me crazy, LOL. Project Corona, you are the winner this week. You're gonna be getting a free bottle of nanopolymer adhesive shipped straight to your door. If you'd like a free nanopolymer adhesive, leave a comment below and the funniest or the most informative or the best or the best suggestion will be the winner. We do this every week, so make sure you get down there right now and comment and like this video. Anyway, if we've missed anything or if you like this, we specialize in high temp materials and machines and we've got everything from A to Z, so if you need something like that, let us know. Otherwise, have a positive rest of your day and we'll see you on the next video.